small version of the BMW iX. Shark nose. Almost like a shark nose, guys. This is the most BMW thing ever. Certain angles, I almost mistook it for a BMW X3. Hello everyone! When it comes to German car manufacturers in the automotive industry, they are known for adapting very fast to new trends and new standards. And this is also the case with BMW. Now, I said this before and I'm going to say it again. The Germans never innovate, but they always aim for perfection. In fact, they come up with new technologies once somebody else does so. For instance, on the topic of electric cars, Tesla came up with the first desirable electric car and then the Germans reacted. Now when it comes to crossover SUVs, the Japanese competitors sold like hotcakes in the 90s and in the 2000s everyone. And when it comes to premium crossover SUVs, Lexus took the trophy. And now the reason why I say took is because it was before, back in the 2000s and the 90s. But who takes the trophy today, especially here in the EU market? in the premium segment? Yes, that's right guys, the answer is right behind me. BMW, Mercedes and Audi. Three German luxury car manufacturers, BMW, Mercedes and Audi, they each had different beginnings. Mercedes grew from limousines and trucks, basically anything that had a large diesel engine. Audi kind of expanded because of Volkswagen's help. BMW, on the other hand, expanded from small vehicles. They, in fact, grew because of small vehicles. They were born from small vehicles. Now, right behind me, everyone, is the all-new BMW X1. Now, I'm going to tell you something very interesting about the X1, guys. The BMW X1 is the smallest crossover SUV in the X series. Since the first generation BMW X1 was released, it sold like hotcakes, just like the BMW X3 and just like the BMW X5. In fact, here in the EU market, the hot selling, the fact that they sell like hotcakes, it's not a surprise. It's something every BMW has enjoyed. Every BMW has enjoyed unquestionable fame. But that cannot really be said about their reliability back in the 2000s and in the early 2010s. The first generation BMW X1 sold like hotcakes, but at the same rate, it vanished instantly. And uh, that's th like by the time we were talking 2020, they vanished. They were nowhere to be seen. But they were replaced by the new generation, guys. The second generation BMW X1 was more interesting desirable and it sold like hotcakes as company car. Let's see if this BMW X1 has what it takes to uphold that reputation its predecessor held and let's see if it has what it takes to last longer. Over here is the all new BMW X1 everyone. I am very impressed by how it looks guys. I am really excited. In fact, when I first saw it, it looked like a small version of the BMW iX. Now, I have to remind you all, BMW has taken strong initiatives towards electric cars, and this equally meant an influence in the design. The all-new BMW X1 starts at a price of 39,000 euros. Now, when we are talking about premium car manufacturers, it's very difficult to discuss about value for money. But we all have expectations nonetheless, everyone, and we also have an expectation on whether the company upholds its reputation. So over here is the exterior design of the BMW X1. Now I have to remind you all that uh, this is the new generation X1 and so therefore it has some resemblance to the previous generation. And it's very evident with the headlights. Uh, if you look at the headlights, the front, it looks like an evolution of the last generation. And this is where I come to a point uh, of the, to the topic of uh, evolution and German car manufacturers. German car manufacturers like to play it evolutionary. Well, I do not know the veracity of this information, but I believe that the grille opens for extra air intake. Uh, I noticed that BMW has been doing some very clever things with their grille, guys. Um, these are actual air vents. That is very impressive, guys. It's very, very nice. And then... This is the front. The, again, as I've stated, guys. Uh, and then also another thing I'd like to remark is that BMW has developed an obsession for vertical grills. In fact, if you look very carefully, something very interesting has just developed at the front, guys. Compared to the last generation, BMW has employed a shark nose. Almost like a shark nose, guys. Look at this carefully. Look at this. Doesn't it go diagonal that way? 
It's very interesting. It reminds me of something uh, BMW used to do back in the 60s, the 70s and the 80s. This BMW X1 is a traditional X series BMW and the reason why I say traditional is because it's a blend between some round edges and some sharp edges. Like look at this. BMW traditionally always has a sharp edge uh, design on the side like this that goes all the way to the back. And then the, okay, well, first of all the wheels. The wheels look very nice. Five spoke uh, alloys. Very good. Um, they kind of remind me of what BMW did with the iX, which is very interesting. Look at this, everyone. You get lighting just right under the uh, mirrors. Welcome lights. Look at this. Ta-da! There's something that's a bit remarkable, and that is BMW likes to make their models look like other models. Now, this can cause a bit of confusion. It's like how I confused the X3 for the X5. Uh, this has happened a few times, and then I, upon closer inspection, I realized that uh, they're different cars. Um, but then over here, you have the rear design. Now, the rear design is where all the differences start to emerge. In fact, it looks very much... Uh, it looks like a concept car brought to life, guys. Very interesting. I like those rear lights, and I like what BMW has done. So you have this traditional design. So here you have the body paint, the rear lights, everyone. Let's just take a moment and admire the rear design, guys. During the exterior of this BMW X1, guys, I was very impressed, and I loved the presentation. Very promising, guys. But then I did notice some questionable aspects. The first questionable aspect I'd like to remark, guys, is that um, I don't know what is it about uh, BMW, but lately they've been having some things about the front that has no purpose whatsoever like uh, for instance you get this bit of plastic that doesn't seem to have a purpose I feel like sometimes trying too much can kind of uh, backfire and the reason I say this is because these door handles look a bit unnecessary in fact I was thinking that they are pop-out door handles so when you unlock the car it pops out automatically but no instead these are classic handles like this Like, look at this, guys. And that too, they are very stiff to pull. Um, now, whether this is really questionable or not, you all be the judge. I mean, it's quite innovative. Like, I see what BMW has tried to do right here. They tried to play something different. But it just doesn't seem interesting, guys. Like, if it popped out or if it was more, you know... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I still prefer handles, especially for a premium crossover SUV. Now, when it comes to equipment list, everyone, um, I did notice that there was a front parking sensor. Uh, th there were front parking sensors and rear parking sensors, so uh, which is good. But there's no 360 degree parking camera. Now, guys, um, I've noticed that the German car manufacturers they like to play it expensive in the sense they like to. Well, the more you add the more interesting your vehicle becomes. That's basically how uh, German car manufacturers operate. So they don't really operate by good value for money. Um, but they do have the driving pleasure on their side. Okay, everyone, now it's time to explore the interior of the BMW X1. Oh, wow, everyone, this interior looks very, very nice, very, very modernized. I am very impressed with the presentation. When it comes to BMW interiors compared to Mercedes and Audi, BMW interiors tend to be very driver-centric, so it's always driver-oriented, facing the driver. You get your climate control directly in the infotainment system, so BMW, like other German car manufacturers and other car manufacturers in the EU market, they've tried to play it very simple. So they, you know, minimal buttons and more uh, utility or practicality solutions, guys. Now, I don't know if it's just me, but something about the X1 takes on very much after the, uh, uh, the iX. In fact, it reminds me a little bit of the iX. I like it. First of all, I have to compliment, uh, well done BMW, well done. I really like this bold step ahead and I love the theme. Okay, let's just say something guys. Um, this is my favorite. This this is a, one of the best combination I've ever seen for a BMW crossover SV, let alone a BMW car. So the, my favorite combination is when you have this um, silver trim, the blue lighting and the piano black trim this is the most bmw thing ever i i love this guys i really really do and i love this presentation now guys the leather of bmw oh yes just as fancy as your louis vuitton bags everyone 
Look at this. Now, I've noticed that out of Mercedes, BMW, and Audi, uh, BMW likes to be very detailed with their leather. Like, I, I don't know if it's just me, but this is the observation I've noticed. Like, this is the observation I made, guys. I mean, their leathers tend to be very detailed. It's like very just so nice to look at very pleasant you get electric seating adjustments everyone you get seating memory everyone and then also you get this nice door handle right here this has to be one of the most interesting door handles i've ever seen so far something is very reassuring and this is something i've noticed with other german car manufacturers like that of volkswagen and audi and mercedes is that whenever you open or close the door it's very solid like look listen to this it's, it's just, it's very nice. I love the sound the door makes whenever you open and close it. It's this metallic sound. Most interesting uh, handles I've ever seen, guys. Very good. I like it. Steering wheel, guys, looks very nice. Uh, I don't know if it's just me, but I find the steering wheel a little bit... It looks very big. And then also another thing I'd like to remark is that it's, it's very pleasant to hold on to. It's very squidgy. I love it. But I feel like it's a little bit too big. Like, look at how thick it is. Hmm. Everyone, now let's cover some practicality solutions. So, you get your wireless telephone recharge right here. Cup holders right here. Uh, storage space underneath right here. And underneath this whole um, panel, right? This whole thing is floating, okay? And you get uh, some storage underneath there. Storage space here. Ta-da! And then over here is your glove box. Ah, uh, your glove box is average. It reminds me of the same size I saw at the inside the BMW iX. So whether this is indeed questionable or not, you all be the judge. Looks a bit average to me for a crossover SUV of this size in segments. And then over here is your door bin, everyone. Very nice. I don't know if it can fit. Uh, I don't know if it can fit a big water bottle, but hey, it's a. Uh... It's as good as it has to be, actually. And then over here, some lighting controls, everyone, but no panoramic roof or sunroof. Oh, well, optional. This is a very big step ahead for BMW, especially with the X1, and it's far more desirable than the previous generation. But then I also noticed some questionable aspects, and I'm going to point them out right now to you all. Uh, the first questionable aspect I'd like to point out is that practicality seems to be very behind in this BMW X1. It seems like space has been sacrificed for added grace and i'm going to point out to you why uh so first of all there's no storage solution over here no 12 volt socket well there oh there's a 12 volt socket here and a usb point there but then you get this whole thing just for a telephone recharge like literally now you see, guys, it's it's very nice, it's very desirable, but do you really need this whole thing just for a telephone recharge? Because to me, I think it would have been more interesting if this was a storage, like if this opened for a deeper storage or, you know, if it had something smart going on. And then also, uh, the cup holder position is good. I know BMW likes to always put their cup holders forward, which is good. Uh, that's not questionable. But what is questionable is this storage space right here. This is supposed to be your central console storage and it is very shallow and very narrow. And uh, then you get some extra storage down there, but it's very shallow and uh, it's, it's well, it's underneath this uh, floating uh, bit of the interior. Another thing I found very questionable is that uh, BMW abandoned the uh, concept of having a swivel wheel. Uh, now, I don't know if this is with other BMW models, but uh, so far with this BMW X1, we do not see any presence of a swivel wheel over here. Um, maybe BMW has other ideas. I apologize if I'm wrong. Please let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. Um, me, personally, I'm a fan of the swivel wheel, but then, hey, I guess... I guess the infotainment system is arm reach, so it's not that much of a big deal. The build of the car is unquestionable, okay? It's very solid, but there's something about this door handle that does not feel the same about the the door or the rest of the interior. Uh, for instance, if you pull it carefully, like just gently, you notice it starts to budge a little bit. It's 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 a bit it wobbles a little bit, guys. See, like I'm just leaning my leg gently onto the door. Every time I lean my leg onto the door, this whole thing moves. And that's a bit 
unusual for a premium manufacturer, let alone a German car manufacturer. The questionable aspect I'd like to remark is that whilst the rest of the interior is quite flamboyant and quite interesting, uh, BMW didn't really put much details on the steering wheel buttons and on the window controls. They just leave it as hard plastic. Like, wouldn't it be more interesting to give it some chrome trim or perhaps some, uh, well, some details? And same for the windows, it's all hard plastic. Time to explore the rear seat of the BMW X1, everyone. Woo! Guys, I love it. It's very nice. It feels just at home. Oh yes, and I get this uh, C pillar that's obstructing my view outside. Look at this, guys. Ah, VIP style. I get to spy on everything that happens outside. <laughs> oh, I love it, guys. Oh, look at this. Oh. Guys, uh, this is an armrest and I'm actually using a lot of force pulling it down. Okay. Okay, wow, finally. Is that questionable or not? You all be the judge. Um, all right, so this is your nice armrest, first of all. A nice cup holder in there. You have a lot of leg room. In fact, uh, the seat is basically floating over the legs. Like, look at this, guys. It's elevated, which is very good. I mean, whoever designed the rear seat uh, clearly thought of leg room. And uh, equally, meaning my knee room is good. It's perfect. The ceiling is very above. I mean, it's as above as that of a ceiling in a hall. Look at this. I have so much headroom. The rear seats feel quite cozy, actually. Well, it's it's average. It's not firm, but it's not that cozy as a sofa. Uh, but it's nice. The headrest is... Uh, a bit firm. Well, not very firm, but it's not as soft as I've seen that on uh, competitors. Uh... Hmm. And uh, that's about it, guys. The rest of the interior is... Hmm. Okay, so air vents right here, USB points right there, but no climate control. Uh, let me see what's happening. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Um, it's just a, a very shallow storage space that I can only imagine what it can be used for. Uh, otherwise, you get a rear seat pocket on both seats, and it's a net, so it's quite flexible. Uh, but it's hard plastic over here, so if ever your knee makes contact with this, yeah. You will all be the judge. Because it's pretty dark back here, we have a beacon of hope lighting. Yay! And then we have a, uh, we have a handle right here and a coat hook right there. So over here is your doorbin, everyone. And this is your uh, bottle holder. Quite nice. The doorbin is actually bigger than I expected. Very good. It's bigger than average. Oh, I don't know if it's just me, but something about this door sill right here, the design right here, it reminds me of the iX. It's very interesting how BMW went about the design of this door. It's it's very busy, the design. <laughs> very nice. And time to explore the boot space of the BMW X1. So over here is the boot space of the BMW X1, everyone. So it's quite spacious, average for a crossover SUV of this size and segment. Then over here you get a 12 volt socket. You even get a button to fold up the trailer hitch hook, guys. This is your trailer hitch hook. There's a button to fold it up. And you get some hooks for your shopping. Very, very nice. It's uh, it's it's as good as it has to be for its size and segment, guys. Um, there's no tether point for some reason. I can't spot any tether points. But uh, please let me know in the comment section if uh, there's a tether point for the X1. Electric rear doors, guys. Quite a premium feel. Oh, uh, okay. Ah, there we go. So here's my conclusion of the BMW X1, everyone. I have to say that this is a very big step ahead for BMW, and I am very proud of how far BMW has gone with the X1. They've stuck to their guns, and they have made it more desirable than ever, and they've made you not feel very ashamed of driving an X1, because there was a time where the X1 used to feel like you basically bought a BMW just for the badge. But this time, BMW has made sure that you are not buying this BMW just for the badge, but you're buying it because of the feel, because of its driving pleasure, basically because of its reputation overall. It seemed like BMW maintained high priority for being stylish, for being somewhat flamboyant or more... They, they try to be different, you know, they try to be innovative. But it feels like each time the German car manufacturers try to be innovative, it sort of backfires on them. Evident with the BMW X1, uh, the interior was very nice, very pleasant, very premium, and also very stylish. 
well done BMW, driver centric like always, but practicality solutions were a bit alarming, especially for its size, segment, and price. Uh, now, whether it's that questionable or not, you all be the judge. And as for reliability, well, reliability is very... It's a topic that can be questionable when talking about German car manufacturers because their reliability entirely depends on the driver. If it's a good driver who looks after the car, German cars tend to outlast everything on the road. But if it's a bad driver that neglects the car, that car will fall apart as soon as the warranty expires. So for the BMW X1, the reliability all depends on how you treat your X1. Do you want my opinion of this BMW X1? Oh, I love it! I love this BMW X1, guys. This BMW X1 has to be one of BMW's most interesting models of today's generation because this is a crossover SUV that's actually more affordable compared to other X series models, but at the same time, more desirable and also can be family friendly, depending on how you use it, guys. But if practicality is not your need, this is the car for you. If you prefer style, over practicality, this is the car for you. Uh, but then also just another thing is that me personally, I think the BMW iX, I think the BMW X1 needs a bit of a stronger identity of its own because from certain angles, I almost mistook it for a BMW X3. Like that was just for one minute, guys. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos that are on the run. And please don't forget to check the links in the description for my car reviews, travel videos, and my creativity videos. Please your, please leave your thoughts in the comments to let me know what you think of the BMW X1. And uh, I have a question to ask you all. What is your favorite BMW X series model? Is it the X1? Is it the X2? Is it the X3? X4? X5? X6? X7? Let me know in the comments and we can talk about it. All right. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful night. Bye.